was it like touring? You said you were 16 when you went on your mm -hmm. first tour. Yeah. What's that like? Usually kids would be in high school or... Yeah, well, I did it yeah. during the holidays, you know, during the school holidays yeah, in the summer. Yeah, like, what's it like going around, you know? Um, well, the thing, okay, so the thing about it was I was playing in punk rock bands at the time. I used to listen to, I grew up listening to bands like Green Day and The Offspring yeah. and stuff like that. And, um, and then I got into the kind of slightly more underground stuff. I don't know if you know bands like No Effects and Descendants and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I listen to all that stuff, and, and the thing about punk rock as an idea is there's this thing that people call it DIY. It's just the idea that you shouldn't wait for the world to give you the things you want, just go out and grab them. And, um, you know, and we read all these books about there's a band called Black Flag, who are this legendary punk band, they have their logo tattooed here. And, you know, they famously used to book their own tours. And we were 16, and we were like, hey, we're a band, we should book a tour. And uh, we found this list of phone numbers of people who put on gigs around, the, around England. And we called them, and we managed to put together two weeks of shows. And we found a guy who was old enough to drive, <laughs> and he had a van. Um, but it was terrible, because we didn't promote any of the shows. No one knew who we were. No one was at any of the gigs. Uh, one of the venues we showed up, and they'd never heard of us. <laughs> and I was like, who was I talking to on the phone? <laughs> we were like, I Wrong number. Yeah, mate. No. Um, and uh, <laughs> and then everybody got really sick, and um, you know, the shows were, were terrible. <laughs> but, but it was a really good time, you know, um, and just just the because you know I love to play music and just being able to play every single day, you know, and to be with your friends and traveling is kind of adventure, you know. And it was funny that we there was a, I think there was twelve people on the tour because it was two different bands and some of our friends. And when we got to the end of the tour, half the people went, "I'm never ever ever going to do that ever again." It was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. And the other half just went, "That was so cool. Let's do it again. Let's do it again." Imagine if there'd been any people at the gigs. <laughs> you know, um, but it was. I mean, you know, it, it was. And we lost like all our money, you know, and everyone got sick and and, uh, and all that kind of thing. But it was. It was an adventure. It was a really cool adventure. Did you ever play another instrument, like when you were younger? Yeah, <laughs> don't you look at me like that. Um, yeah, okay, so when I was a kid, I got piano lessons when I was a kid, right? Um, my mum and dad got me piano lessons, and I hated them. And I didn't ever practice. And they were teaching me, like, classical music, like Mozart and stuff, you know? And, um, and then, I, know I, w I didn't really know about rock and roll music at the time, and then I quit. In fact, actually, my piano teacher told me that I was rubbish at music and that I should do something else with my life. Um, and it really annoyed me. And then I heard rock and roll records for the first time, and a friend of mine had a guitar and I borrowed it, so I learned. But yeah, I mean, I can. I used to play drums a little bit, but I wasn't very good. And, uh, and I've started. Don't you sit there. He's better than me on the drums. So. Um, and then, uh, I, I mean, I'm kind of getting better at the piano now. I, I've kind of started trying to learn again, but then I hang out with this guy and he's really good at the piano. And it's really annoying because every time I feel like I'm getting somewhere, he comes up and goes, That's not true. It is. I'm very intelligent. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I can get a tune out of this thing, but not like he does. So, things with strings and frets, you know, they're kind of a similar thing. What do you play? Violin. 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 You know, very different. Very hard instrument, right? Yeah. I, I bought one once from like a from a thrift store. I bought a violin, <laughs> and I had this idea that if I just took put it in the van while we were on tour, then I would somehow learn to play it by just being near it the whole time. <laughs> and then I don't think I ever touched it. It's, it's one, violin, is one, of, violin is one of those rare instruments that you can kind of pick up most instruments and get a note out of it. Like if you kind of put your lips together and. Never, enough, then you'll get a note out of a trumpet. Trying to get a good note out of a violin, apparently it's impossible. I tried it several times and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing good. Hammond. Well, uh, when you're on tour that much, how do, you, how do you find time to write new songs? Um, yeah, it's just kind of... Um, I'm going to answer this okay. one. Frank, Frank does this weird thing, right, where he'll come, come out of his bunk and bus in the morning and go, oh, I woke up at four in the morning last night and wrote the second verse of that song. It's like, I was, like, well, I, I was having this dream, and then in the middle of the dream, everything stopped. I came up with this great lyric, so I woke myself up. Mm -hmm. I did that and went back to sleep. Yeah. He's a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I write quite a lot of stuff in the shower as well. I don't know why, but it just seems like a good place to think about music. And then quite often, I come running out of the shower going, Pen! 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 <laughs> um, I don't, you know, it's, uh, it's not something that I have to... It's not, it's not that I don't have to put effort into it. I have to put tons of effort into it. I spend my whole life thinking about songs. But... I don't have to kind of make myself write, it just kind of happens, you know what I mean? Um, and, the thing, the other, and the other thing about it is just that I figure that everybody has writer's block at some time, you know? Even Bob Dylan got crazy writer's block in the 80s, and if he can get writer's block, anybody can get writer's block. So I feel like while it's still kind of here, just keep writing it down, you know what I mean? Maybe I should stockpile. 
<laughs> that are drawing it, so that you tend I'm still writing them, but actually yes. I wasn't really. But it, I mean, they just, uh, you know, I always try and find time to just sit around and play guitar, you know? Um, also, the, the, um, before, you, before we um, can do a live show, for our sound engineer, he needs us to, to play everything in the sound check before everybody gets there to see the gig. So when we're kind of sound checking, we get a chance to run over ideas yeah. that Frank might have and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, we usually that. just measure so time for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So, um, you guys grew up in London? Uh, I actually grew up in a place called Winchester, which is about 60 miles away from London, but near enough, yeah. I grew up in a town 60 miles north of London called Milton Keynes. And then we came together and met in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, has anyone here ever been to the UK, been to England? Awesome. So, uh, oh, really? Where about? In Hampstead. In Hampstead? Oh, very good. North London, nice. Um, uh, do you ever go to a place called Holloway? It's no. Like, <laughs> I don't go to Holloway either. <laughs> Hampstead's a very nice place. Hampstead's very nice. It's in West Hampstead. Um, yeah, 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 Lakeland. Nice. Do you know? Do you know the name of the road? Do you know anything like that? Um, yeah, we, we lived, lived on Fitzjohn Avenue. Avenue. I, I don't know what that is. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I live. Not that doesn't make any difference, but there's a really good bar around the corner around there. <laughs> 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 don't play music. It's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. Is it the one on the corner? Yeah, there? you shouldn't know that. <laughs> 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 Any? I knew it was relevant. Um, but yeah, I, well, I live two miles south east of there in Harlem. So, mm. yeah, cool. Hello. What's your favorite guitar? My favorite guitar? That is a fine question. Um, I, have, I have a lot of guitars, right? Um, and most of my guitars are built for me by a guy called Patrick James Eggle. He built this one. Um, and uh, he kind of knows what I like these days and builds me what I like. But the first guitar that he built for me, crazily enough, he actually built it from a tree that grew in the village where I grew up, um, which was actually a surprise for me. He didn't tell it's me attention to detail. That. Yeah, it was an English walnut tree, and um, it's a great guitar. The only thing about the guitar, I did about a thousand shows with it, and I beat it up really bad. Um, and then I got it fixed, but I've now retired it from touring because I'm really worried that I'll kill it if I keep taking it on the road. So it, now it lives in my house. How and about I, electric? Um, you know, I have I own, I, own, I own two electric guitars. I own one electric guitar that was a, one of the hollow body ones, you know, with the F holes in. Like the, yeah, hollow body. Um, and uh, that was, it's an old like 1947 guitar. That's I a really great guitar. Like that. Yeah, they're really nice guitars. Gretsch guitars are great. But um, I also, the very first guitar I ever got was like a, I guess, sort of, you know, like 50, 60 bucks, something like that. Black and white copy of a Stratocaster, but like yeah. with some weird thing written on the headstock. And uh, Ben Dawson, the drummer in my old band, still has it. The, Swine. Um, swine. Yes, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. He nicked my old drum and nicked it and he's still got it. Um, um, did. So I'm going to try and steal it back off him one day. Um, Frank also owns a Dane Electro baritone guitar, which is halfway between your guitar and the bass. Oh, eight string. No, it's a six, it's a six string, but it's... Instead of the bottom string being E, it's like A, so it's like um, much pitched. Lower. And uh, we have a, a side project band called Mongol Horde that's like a really noisy punk band. Yeah. <laughs> Without my <laughs> um, <laughs> he, uh, he plays He plays that baritone guitar in that band and it sounds really noisy and heavy. Cool. Yeah, it's fun. Mm. All right, guys. Is that it? Can we thank these guys for coming? Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.